Okay, this is session number one of what, of week number four. I mean, um, this is the last week uh, of this course. So we are going to begin with the information that we have here for um, the last week. So you can see that times is really, really flying because we are at the end of the course. So we're going to begin because we have this one hour to complete the whole information that we have for this session number one of the week number four. So, um, and then this uh, week, I mean, this session, we are going to have just three more uh, days to complete this um, this course. So remember that you need to complete the uh, exercises that you have on the platform. If you have not uh, ending the exercises, you need to do it um, this week. So you have to work on the exercises that you have on the platform because um, you are not going to have uh, more time to complete your uh, exercises because the next week is going to be vacation. So in that case, you are not going to have that week to complete the exercises. You have just this one or this week um, to complete the sections that you have on the platform. Así que si no han trabajado en la plataforma, eh, pónganse el día de esta semana, ya que esta semana se eh, termina lo que es el curso, o sea, este, este módulo. Así que eh, si no han completado o les falta un par de secciones, pues tienen esta semana para completarlo, porque ya las siguientes son vacaciones y ya no van a poder eh, completar sus ejercicios la próxima semana. So you need to do it in this week. So we are going to start with the topic that we are going to develop right now. But first, we are going to read the sentence that I have for you. In the sentence it says, never lose hope. Success will reward your hard work. In that case, if you are having like a, a hard time doing the things that you are supposed to do, you need to remember that you need to keep fighting. You need to maintain your hope because it's the, the thing that makes you complete all the actions or the activity or the work that you have for your life. Remember, this is a... Um, a long way to complete our uh, situations or in our the actions that we want to perform but at the end we are going to have a reward of our hard work so keep fighting and do the best you can and also enjoy your job because in that case if you are not enjoying your job or your work it's going to be very hard to complete all the things that you need to do because you are going to feel bad, tired, angry, or something like that. So you need to first enjoy your job and then you are going to complete it in a very good way. So remember that we were talking about conditionals in previous uh, topics. Um, we have information about the conditionals and also we were talking about the unreal conditionals but now we are going to focus on the unreal conditionals what are unreal conditionals what um how can we create sentence uh, in which we are going to put into practice the information about unreal conditionals and a lot of information that we are going to develop about this topic. So we are going to start right now because we have a couple of minutes to complete the whole information. So in this case, we have 
conditional sentence to have in this case we're just talking about the conditional sentence we're not uh, talking about just unreal conditional in this case is um the structure for conditional sentences and in this case it says that it has two parts last a uh, last uh, oraciones conditionales or conditional sentence siempre tienen dos partes a condition and a result. Que tiene una condición y un resultado. Siempre son dos partes en una oración. And it says unreal conditional are like real conditional, but with unreal um, situation. We're talking about unreal situation or that are not possible to happen or are totally impossible. Um, the condition is not true or not real or it is very unlikely to happen or to be true. We are just imagining what we will do in a situation that is not real or very unlikely to be real. In este caso estamos hablando que las, eh, las real conditional son situaciones reales que van a pasar. Y como lo dice la, la palabra unreal, cosas que no son reales, eh, que nos estamos imaginando un resultado eh, que puede que no pase o que es un poco improbable que pase, un poco imposible. De eso se trata el unreal conditional, de cosas que podemos decir deseamos que pasaran, pero no van a pasar. So in that case, we have some examples in which we can see that information that we are uh, talking about. And we have the first one. And it says, if this shirt were on sale, I would buy it. If, if, if this shirt were on sale, I would buy it. Yes. La camisa estuviera en venta, la compraría. Sí, es una, es una eh, situación imaginaria 
porque básicamente la camiseta no está en venta, así que no la vamos a comprar, no la vamos a poder comprar. Así que en este caso es una situación imaginaria porque nos gustaría que pasara. If. In that case, uh, that is very important to use the if. If this shirt were on sale, I would buy. In that case, it is impossible to do it. So in that case, you can see that we have two parts of the same sentence, separated by comma. Siempre vamos a tener estas estructuras con dos partes, porque ya lo decíamos, tienen dos partes, una condición y un resultado. En este caso, en la oración, if this shirt were on sale, is the condition. And the result is, I will buy it. But in this case, I can do it. Because in that case, it's something unreal. Así que lo del principio es como la condición, lo que quisiéramos que pasara. Y lo segundo, el, el resultado que nos hubiera gustado hacer. And it says, really, the search, because in this case, it's the real thing. This shirt is not on sale, and I will not buy it. Um, okay, I don't know if there is raining, but here is is um raining right now. So in that case, uh, we are going to have just um some troubles with the connection. So this situation is going to happen like a lot today. So, for that reason, so for that reason, we are going to have this kind of inconvenience because here is raining and it is a uh, kind of complicated to have a, a really good internet connection uh, when it, these uh, things are happening. But we are going to continue. So then we have the example number two. When this one, what? If I were an animal, if I were an animal, I will be a lion. So in that case, it's something very, very imaginary because in that case, we cannot change our bodies to uh, being an animal. So in that case, it's just like something in our head, it's something imaginary. And the reality is that we are not animals, so in that case, it's something impossible to happen. Así que en este caso, ¿verdad? Estamos viendo este ejemplo clarísimo de un unreal conditional en el que eh, es algo imposible de que pase porque no podemos convertirnos en un animal. Eh, así que ese ejemplo es clarísimo, ¿verdad? Del unreal conditional in which we have this imaginary thing. 
And in this case, it's saying that we are going to see some examples um, of when we might use an unreal conditional for a highly unlikely thing. But this one is going to be very um, slow, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, here. So in this case, we're going to see some examples of unreal uh, conditionals when we are going to talk about a highly unlikely thing. Así que vamos a utilizar los unreal conditionals para hablar de situaciones que eh, puede que no lleguen a pasar nunca. So we have here. Number one, if I won the lottery, I will buy a house and a car. So in that case, you can see, or you can say, but in that case, it's kind of possible to win a lottery. And yes, it is um, something that can happen. But in this case, you need to remember that in this case, uh, the probability or winning the lottery is so loud. So in that case, we're going to use the unreal conditional. Así que, Sí podemos llegar a pensar que nosotros podemos ganar la lotería y todo eso, pero las probabilidades son bastante bajas. En este caso vamos a utilizar el unreal conditional porque puede que alguna vez en nuestra vida podamos llegar a ganar la lotería, pero en otras situaciones puede que nunca ganemos la lotería. Porque esto es, podemos decirlo, una cuestión de suerte, ¿verdad? So, in that case, when we are talking about lottery and all of that thing, we are going to use the unreal conditional. And in the second one, it says, if I met the president, I would want to tell him to lower taxes. And again, yes, we can meet the person in a moment in our life, but in this case, it's again something very low. Um, and again, in, in this case, if this person is saying that if he meets the president, uh, he will say something about taxes. But in some cases, when you have the opportunity to see the president, it is not like you're going to tell your desires. In that case, it's like you're going to have like a meeting or you need to give something to the president in name of a company or something like that. So in that case, it's not like kind of possible to use this kind of information with the president because it is not like the meaning of the meeting. So in that case, again, we are going to use the unreal Conditional. And it says that we can use unreal conditionals 
in the present, the past, and the future. And we can also make sentences, but this uh, part of the topic, we are going to see it later. So in that case, it is not like this kind of a conditional, we're just going to use it with present or with past or with future. In this case, you can use it for all the tenses that we have in English. And also we can make a mix of conditional, uh, I mean, a mix of tenses with this unreal conditional. But that topic or that part of the topic, we're going to say it later because we need to focus on the explanation or the mixed uh, senses because it's kind of um, confusing sometimes. So in that case, we're going to um, have that information later in which we are going to develop uh, the whole information about the mixed senses. So we are going to see the present and future on real conditional, how to create them and how to use it. And what are the structures that we can use for these uh, conditionals? So in this case, we have present and future on real conditional. And it says, this conditional talks about what we will do in an unreal situation. We are just imagining or thinking about it. It is not real or it is very unlikely to be real. So, in este caso, vamos a hablar, ¿verdad? De cosas que podríamos haber hecho de una situación irreal o poco probable. Eh, que estamos pensando sobre eso, lo estamos imaginando, pero que mm, es un poco improbable que pase. So in this case, we have the following structures. We have a structure number one, and it says if plus when plus condition plus then plus 
Then in this case is the result. Así que tenemos la estructura donde vamos a crear oraciones que lleven if o que lleven when con la condición, que es el unreal conditional, o la condición. Luego vamos a poner then, que es el resultado de lo que estamos imaginando. And also we can have number two, the result. Plus if or when plus the condition. Lo podemos hacer al revés también, ¿verdad? Si vemos las estructuras que tenemos por ahí. And it says the condition is in the past tense. And we are going to use would, could, my, may. Last verb for the result in the future or present tense. And we have some example for these structures. We have number one, and it says, if I didn't have to work, I would go hiking every day. If I didn't have to work, I will go hiking every day. Si no tuviera que trabajar, iría a hacer hiking, ¿verdad? Every day. But it is not possible because we need to work. Number two. If she had more time, she will learn English. If she had more time, she will learn English. In this case, maybe that person has a lot of work to do. So, in that case, she doesn't have any time in which she can learn uh, English. So, in that case, it's unlikely to happen, but maybe in the future she can uh, change that situation. Number three, they will come if it was possible. But sadly, it is impossible for them to come. They will come if it were possible. Ellos vendrían si fuera posible, pero tristemente es imposible para ellos venir. So in that case, we are talking about a situation in which uh, these people is not going to come because it is impossible.
give me a second, please. Okay, let's continue. So we have another example and it says, I wish this car were cheaper. If it were cheaper, I will buy it in a second. Desearía que este carro fuera más barato. Si fuera más barato, lo compraría en un segundo. In this case, we can also say that um, we are talking about wishes again. Así que podemos hablar también de los deseos, ¿verdad? De I wish, desearía que. Sí, simplemente puede que no pase porque no se le va a cambiar, ¿verdad? El, el precio tan excesivamente al automóvil. Then we have, if there were another way, I will not quit my job, but I don't think there is another way. Si hubiera otra manera, no hubiera dejado mi trabajo, pero creo que no hay otra forma. Next one. I could move to Canada if I spoke English better. In this case, it's not like um, very unlikely to happen because in some uh, places, when you are going to work, it is not like something essential that you speak in English, but it's something that uh, will help you uh, with uh, this kind of situation. But in this case, we are going to have it like this. And the last one, it says, she might lie me if I were more handsome. In that case, it's not like uh, depending just on the on the face or something like that, because maybe that person uh, didn't like this man because she didn't find him interesting for her. So in that case, it's not likely to happen, even if he is more handsome, because it is not just depending on that. And it says that we are going to use only if, to give the condition for present and future on real conditional. We are not going to use when, um, we can 
uh, only use one with real conditional. En este caso vamos a utilizar solo el ir para dar la condición al tiempo presente y al futuro en condicionales eh, que no son reales. Number four. Oh. Number four. Yes, it's one. Because in this case, we are talking about just one thing. But um, in some cases, when we are using, um, yes, uh, that is something that we were talking about um, in the last uh, time in which we were talking about conditionals. In that case, we are not going to use what, we are going to use where for this kind of conditional. So in that case, it is not incorrect. In that case, if you can, you can use was, but it is not like a very common in this kind of a conditionals. In this case, you are going to use where. Ya hablábamos en el tema anterior de los condicionales que eh, sí podemos utilizar el was, pero es mejor utilizar el where para todos los eh, pronombres, por ejemplo. Así que en este caso no es que esté malo, es que se utiliza de esa forma. Ya lo teníamos en la, en la información anterior y lo vamos a reforzar en esta. No vamos a utilizar el was. Es mejor utilizar el where para todos los pronombres. Así que en este caso, si lo podemos utilizar, eh, si podemos utilizar el was, pero no es tan común. No es tan común utilizarlo. Es mejor utilizar el where. So in that case, you know that we need to remember that kind of information because it is important in this case. Cuando estamos utilizando los, eh, los unreal conditionals, cuando estamos hablando de situaciones irreales o conditionals que tienen que ver con cosas irreales, no vamos a utilizar el what, vamos a utilizar el where. You're welcome. Así que en este caso sí tenemos que acordarnos que en situaciones irreales vamos a utilizar where y no what. So I was saying that in, in that case, vamos a utilizar el y para dar la condición para el presente y el futuro en las on the conditionals. Y no vamos a utilizar el when porque este solo lo vamos a utilizar con condiciones reales. So in that case, we are not going to use when for unreal conditional, just for real conditional. And I'm going to write again the part in which we say that we can, uh, or we are going to use where in order to use what in this kind of conditional. Así que voy a volver a escribir la parte donde especificamos que no vamos a utilizar el web, sino que el web en las unreal conditions.
Then here we have the specification for what and where. And I will mark it because when you search for this information, you are going to uh, find it easily. So here we have the information about the what and where. So I'm going to mark it with this down. So we have here the information. And we are going to have some examples. And we have, if I were a millionaire, I would live in London. If I were a millionaire, I would live in London. The second one, if she were nicer, then I will invite her to my party, but she is not nice, and I do not want her at my party. A question in this part that that's okay. that uh, the use of was in in the place of work have mm -hmm. a, a specific reason or is only for that is most common in this case it is because it is more um, common in this way because in that case we are using on real situation so it's like making it more comfortable when you are using it. So in that case, um, you're not going to divide the, the subject using what or where. But in the information that we have, um, or the first information that we have about the, the unreal conditional, it said that you can use what because you are um, used to have that information, but in this case, uh, you can also use just where and it is okay. So in that case, if you don't feel like good with the use of where for all the subjects, you can use what and it is not like a big problem, but it is more uh, common to use where with unreal uh, conditional. Then in some cases, you can use what, but it is depending on you. That is the thing that we were talking about the last time. It's depending on you and how you can use this information. So in that case, if you can use or you want to use what, you can do it. But if not, it is not a big problem. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And also it says that we can also use continuous forms with this conditional. So in this case, we are going to use the, um, the continuous form that is the ING. So we can also use ING forms with the conditional.
and we have the example for the continuous point when we are using this unreal conditional. And it says, if I were working here, or if we, I mean, if I were working there, I will quit. If I were working there, I will quit. Si estuviera trabajando ahí, renunciaría. The second one, if I were in Europe, I will be drinking an espresso in a cafe right now. Si estuviera en Europa, estaría, oh, yeah, estaría tomándome un espresso en un café en este preciso momento. Then we have, she will be going to the beach this weekend if she weren't working. In this oración, she will be going to the beach this weekend if she weren't working. Es lo que decíamos, ¿verdad? Que lo podíamos tener primero, ¿verdad? Lo que es el resultado y luego podíamos poner la situación. So in this case. We have like this kind of sentence. Then we have the feature uh, on the conditional, and we have two other ways to use this information. And the feature on real conditional can look the same as present on real conditional, but there are two different ways to make future on real conditional. And we are going to see what are the uses that we can uh, have for the feature on real conditional. And it says that this is, um, this is just like when we use the present continuous or going to plus the verb to talk about the future. Okay. 
And we have this cluster. We have the number one, and it says that we are going to use if plus condition plus then, that is the result. And again, we can write it and like changing the places in which we are going to use the condition and the result because uh, we can also write first the result and then the condition. Like in the example that we have here, she will be going to the beach this weekend if that is the result and she were not working is the condition. And it says that the condition is the continuous form, that is where plus present participle or we're going to plus the verb. The result also uses the continuous form will be plus present participle. And it says that a person, yes, you have access to the material because you have the link Ustedes tienen el enlace en el grupo. No sé si, eh, si pudieron a, acceder al, al, al enlace que yo les mandé, pero en el enlace del de Google Doc, que es este que estamos eh, viendo ahorita, ahí está todo, todo, todo desde el primer día. Así que voy a volver a mandar el enlace porque ustedes no han podido accesar al enlace de el documento, porque como es un documento de Google, ustedes pueden acceder cuando ustedes quieran y eh, la información se va agregando automáticamente. Yo voy a Entonces, lo voy a volver a mandar el enlace para que ustedes lo tengan ahí e igual, así como me preguntaban la semana pasada, ¿la información se va a eliminar después de que termine el curso? No, la información sigue ahí. Así que si ustedes quieren entrar cuando ustedes quieran para volver a leer la información, sacar algún ejemplo o algo por el estilo, ustedes lo tienen ahí en el eh, Google Doc. So in that case, I will send to you the link again, and you can um, just enter the link to have this one on the Google Doc. Uh, so it is not like you need to download something or some programs on anything like that because um, you can do it on your computer or in your cell phone and you are going to have this information. So remember, you are not going to download any documents. In that case, you're just going to link, uh, access to the link and you're going to see all the information there. So uh, I will continue at the end of this session because you need to have the whole information on the devices itself. I'm going to send again the link, so don't worry. Teacher, um, maybe Karen is not included in the WhatsApp group. Mm, and okay. And the link, but she don't include it in the group. Oh, wow. So, um, I don't know if you can send the link to her. Si alguno de ustedes le pudiera hacer quedar el enlace, estaría muy bien porque eh, no sé por qué no está incluido en el, en, el, en el grupo. Pero si alguien se lo puede hacer quedar, estaría excelente para que pueda uh, acceder a toda la información. Sí, yo la verdad me uní hace un par de semanas y, y ahí luego lo pude ver, pero mm -hmm. las primeras dos semanas no, no me había podido ver nada porque no estaba en el grupo. 
Sí, pero en ese caso no, no es... Eh, o sea, no hay ningún problema de que... De que ah, you are in the group, ok. Eh, no es necesario de que no haya podido eh, ver la información de hace dos semanas porque just we are going to, to have like... Um, a, just, a quick check. Aquí está todo desde el primer día. Esta es la primera parte. Ustedes... No lo pudieron ver la primera semana que yo lo envié. No se preocupen. Ahí está todo, todo, todo. No se ha borrado nada. No se le ha quitado nada. So, in that case, you have uh, the complete information. And, ustedes pueden fijarse eh, dónde inicia y termina la semana. Porque al iniciar la siguiente semana, siempre tiene una imagen de esto. So, esta es la semana número dos. Then, you have a lot of information examples and all of that thing and then you have another image tienen otra imagen con una oración de estos y es la tercera semana volvemos a ver el montón de información ejercicios, ejemplos y todo eso y volvemos a esta imagen que ya es la de la semana 4 so in that case it is not necessary that you have like access from the first day because in the document you have the whole information so don't worry about that So we are going to end with the last part. We have just um, a phrase in which we are going to end this uh, session. And we are going to have just three more sessions um, uh, about tomorrow and the other days. So we are going to end with this. And it says the condition Use the form where plus present participle or we can have I mean we have we're going to plus the verb. And it says that the result also uses the continuous form. Así que en este caso, cuando utilicemos la condición, lo vamos a hacer con las formas del continuo. Y el resultado también va a seguir la misma línea. But we are going to end this topic tomorrow because it's time to end the session. And we are going to see each other tomorrow in session number two of this last week. So have a really good night and I will send to you the link of the document. So bye bye and see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow.